Okay, let's do two last examples to wrap up this lecture. Now let's look at a comparison and contrast of the epsilon method versus the reciprocal method when you have a zero in the first column. We've already seen one example where we had the epsilon method. So assume we have a closed loop transfer function, one over s to the fourth plus s cubed plus two s squared plus two s plus three. The first row is one, two, three. The second row would be one, two. And then B1 would give us a zero, and B2 would give us a three. So because we have a zero, we would replace that with epsilon. So that would then make C1 two minus three over epsilon and zero, and D1 a three. And we would have two sign changes, one between S2 and S1 row, and one between S1 and S0 row. So those two sign changes mean there are two poles in the right half plane, and we have an unstable system. Now let's look at how we would do the same problem using the reciprocal method, knowing that when you do the reciprocal method, you would end up with the same sign changes in the characteristic equation. So to do the reciprocal method, you replace all of the S's in the characteristic equation with one over S. So T of S would equal one over, one over S to the fourth, plus one over S cubed, plus 2 over s squared plus 2 over s plus 3. Then to get rid of the complex fraction, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by s to the fourth. And our new closed loop transfer function would be t of s is equal to s to the fourth over 3 s to the fourth plus two s cubed plus two s squared plus s plus one. And we're now going to use this delta of s in our table in order to test for stability. So the first row is going to be three, two, one. The second row is going to be two, one, zero. Then we're going to find B1 three minus four is negative one divided by two, and then we're gonna negate that, so that's one half. Zero minus two is negative two, and we're gonna negate that and get positive two, and positive two divided by two is one. And we'll put a zero here. Next, we're going to find C1. So that's going to be two minus one half divided by one half, and then negate that, that's negative three. And then here we're gonna have zero minus zero divided by one half, so that's zero. And finally, S zero is going to be zero minus negative three, that's three, divide negative three divided by negative three, so that's a one. So what you see here is that this is a little bit simpler without so much of the complex math, but now we can still see that there's two sign changes, one between one half and negative three, one between negative three and one, and so you get the same answer, two poles in the right half plane, unstable system. In class activity six, use the Routh Hurwitz criterion to determine if the system described by the following closed loop transfer function is stable. T of S is equal to 10 over S to the fourth plus S cubed minus S minus one. So notice that we are missing one term, so this can be written as 10 over S to the fourth plus s cubed plus zero s squared minus s minus one. So the first row is one, zero, negative one. And the second row is one, negative one. So when we solve for C1, we get negative one divided by one and then we negate that, so that becomes positive one. And then we get zero minus negative one, that's one, and then we negate that and that becomes negative one. So now we're ready to do C1. C1 is negative one minus negative one and we get a zero. And then C2 is zero minus zero divided by one and negate that and we get a zero. So once again, we have an example where we have a row of zeros. So we look to the row before that, and this creates a polynomial. The polynomial that it creates is P of S 
is equal to s squared minus one. So if I take the derivative of p of s with respect to s, that's equal to 2s. So we come down to our s1 row and we put a1 here, where a1 is equal to two. And this is still zero. So now we solve for our new b1 and we get that b1 is equal to zero minus negative two. So that becomes two divided by two, which is a one. And then we negate that. So b1 is equal to negative one. So what you see here is that we have one sign change, which means one pole in the right half plane. So we do have an unstable system. And this means that we have three poles in the left half plane. And this concludes today's lecture on the stability analysis using Ralph Hurwitz criterion.